Today we set up a Minecraft server that can control real life objects. I'm Ryan, aka I Make Stuff, and this is part two of my Minecraft controlled Christmas tree tutorial. Hi folks, today I'll be covering everything on the Minecraft side of the control path. This includes basic redstone and command block setup, as well as an amazing plugin called Scriptcraft that gave me the extra touch of magic I needed to get my commands out of Minecraft and into the real world. If you haven't watched part one yet, check it out now to get an overview of what this project is all about. Now, let's take a quick look at how I set up the server. I used Fluctus hosting for this project. You could use any number of options, including hosting the server yourself, but I've used these guys before, so I was familiar with their control panel and knew it could get the job done. I used the three gig SSD package, and it was more than enough to handle this project. The default setup is amazingly simple. Just sign up, log in, and you have your basic vanilla Minecraft server. In order to run the Scriptcraft plugin with the latest version of Minecraft, I needed to use Spigot. Side note, Minecraft plugins are evolving quite a bit right now, so by the time you try this yourself, you may need a different server platform. To change your Fluctus server from vanilla Minecraft to Spigot, just log in, stop the server, click Updates, and click Spigot, then get Spigot 1.8. That's it. When I restart, it will now be running Spigot. This will come in handy later when we start working with Scriptcraft. Now let's take a look at the redstone wiring. For the on-off control, I have a lever connected to redstone and extended using repeaters all the way down the mountain and up the trunk of the tree. Because I stacked the redstone torches vertically to move the signal upwards, I had to make sure I branched out from the correct level of torches to ensure the star and ornaments were in sync. By going vertical with redstone torches, I also introduced a delay when the redstone was activated. This added a nice effect, as the ornaments lit up in stages from the bottom to the top. It also means that the real-life lights update quicker than the Minecraft lights, which is pretty cool. Once I had the tree wired up, I just branched off the redstone wire and connected two control blocks with an inverter in front of one so I could use them to send on and off commands to my real lights. Before you can use command blocks on your server, you need to make sure you have enable command block set to true in the server.properties file. Then enter creative mode and use the give command to obtain the blocks. You need to have proper permissions to do all of this, so it helps if you make sure you are opt. We can test that these are working properly using simple say commands. One block will say on, the other will say off. Then just flick the lever. We will add in the actual script craft commands in just a moment. The ability to change the color of the LED strip was achieved via these buttons over here. There's no redstone needed, just six buttons placed against six command blocks. Again, let's test them out to see that they are behaving how we want them to. I'll have the top buttons increase a color and the bottom buttons decrease a color. Great, now we're ready for some script craft magic. Scriptcraft is a Minecraft plugin created by Walter Higgins. It is essentially a wrapper that lets you program using JavaScript inside Minecraft. And that makes it very powerful and much easier than writing your own Java code. This is the heart of the project. Things may get complicated from here on out, but stick with me. To install Scriptcraft, just download the .jar file from here. I'll provide all links in the description below. Then, place it in your server's plugin directory. There are many ways to do this depending on how you host your server. Once scriptcraft.jar is in the plugins directory, it will automatically be installed the next time you restart your server. Now we can see scriptcraft has been installed and it's running. There's a ton of info online, but let's try a couple simple examples just to demonstrate how it works. If I type slash JS, anything that follows will be executed as JavaScript. For example, slash JS echo hello. 
will echo hello back at us. Or something like slash JS VAR message equals I am a message creates a variable, then slash JS echo message echoes the value of that variable. Hopefully you get the idea. If not, I recommend reading some of the Scriptcraft documentation linked below. With Scriptcraft, you can also write your own multi-line functions ahead of time that can then be executed from the command line in-game. Any files located in this folder with the .js extension will be executed by Scriptcraft when your server loads. So if we open up Notepad++ and make a file that looks like this, then place the file in the plugins slash scriptcraft slash plugins folder and restart the server. We can now type slash JS our custom function and whatever message we want and bingo, the function runs. So what I've done is create a function that will turn the bulbs on or off depending on what command you pass to it. If we type slash JS bulb control HTTP light on, the lights turn on. If we type slash JS bulb control HTTP light off, the lights turn off. These are the commands I have used in the command blocks wired to the on off lever. Let's take a look at the code. This function accepts a variable, checks that the lever isn't being spammed, and sends out the appropriate HTTP request according to the variable it's received. We'll go through this line by line. On line one, we set up the function so Scriptcraft knows its name and the name of the variable we are passing to it. These lines limit the rate the HTTP requests can be sent. This way, people have to wait a few seconds before switching the lights on or off and can't sit there spamming them like a strobe light. First, we set up variable t with the current server time. Then, we find out the difference between the current time t and the last time an HTTP request was sent. That's called last HTTP. Side note, we set up a variable called last HTTP and set it to zero by adding this line above our function code. If the difference is greater than 60 ticks, we go ahead and send the HTTP request. If not, we log a message to the console and broadcast a message in chat asking people to slow down. Once we are ready to send the actual HTTP request, I log the text HTTP command to the console. This tells me a command is being sent. Then we set up the JS response and HTTP variable. I've copied this code almost exactly from the Scriptcraft documentation. Then we send the request to a specific URL. This URL will be the REST API we create in Bluemix using Node-RED, which will be covered in the next video. You can see the URL gets modified by appending the REST variable we passed to the function. That's how we are able to use one function for both the light on and light off commands. We also get ready to receive the response code and response body coming back from whatever responds to our request. The return value from the response is then logged to the console. This helps me see at a glance if the full system is working or not. If I see HTTP command logged without being followed by the proper response values, I know the requests are being sent, but something is malfunctioning along the way. If I see the correct response values logged, I know the lights are responding and the full control path is functioning as it should. This will all be more clear after we cover the Bluemix, Spark Core, and Arduino programming in the next video. To reiterate, what all this means is the Minecraft lever activates one of these two command blocks, which sends out an HTTP request and logs HTTP command to the console. Then the HTTP response comes back and is also logged to the console. Obviously, I could also tell it's working by looking at the lights, but it's helpful to be able to check in on things remotely from a simple console. And this way I can check the log history to see if the control path has been working while I was away. Next, let's look at the LED strip color controls. Again, these allow control of each individual color channel. The top buttons increase the color and the bottom buttons decrease the color. The RGB control function I made is called update RGB HTTP. 
It accepts a single digit command which indicates exactly which channel is being affected and how. If I use a 1, the red channel will go down. A 2, the red channel will go up. 3 lowers the green channel, 4 raises the green channel. And as you can guess, 5 lowers the blue channel while 6 raises the blue channel. Let's look at the code for this function line by line. You can see this is very similar to the function we used earlier, except we are now including the command variable in the HTTP request as a parameter, as opposed to appending it to the REST API URL itself. Again, the top line is telling Scriptcraft the name of the function as well as the name of the variable being passed to the function. We create the HTTP variable the same way as before, but when we execute the request, things look a little different. We now use three lines. One indicates the URL the request is being sent to. Two sets the method. And three attaches our MSG variable as a parameter embedded in the HTTP request. This means I don't need to set up six unique URLs in Bluemix to take in each individual color change command. I can let the Arduino handle figuring out the commands at the very end of the control path. Then, same as before, we set up the response and log it to the console. This function doesn't need a rate limiter, since I want people to be able to change color quickly. And the buttons already limit the speed quite a bit. So if we watch the console as we press the buttons, we can see the response values. Again, I can tell it's working just by reading these logs. Very handy. So that is everything inside of Minecraft itself. I know it's a lot. You may want to watch through this a few times to make sure it's clear. I put time-coded links in the description so you can click back and rewatch any specific part you like. Keep in mind, this is only one piece of the puzzle. Things will make more sense after everything comes together in next week's video. So be sure to subscribe and follow along with the rest of the tutorial. In the meantime, I highly recommend checking out the Scriptcraft documentation. Scriptcraft is an absolutely amazing and powerful plugin, so check it out. Today, we have covered the Minecraft portion of the control path and we have got HTTP requests being sent to Bluemix. Next week, we will cover what happens in Bluemix, the Spark Core, and Arduino to get my lights flickering like crazy. By the end of next week's video, we will have the entire control path covered. And then, of course, in two weeks, we finish up with the Raspberry Pi webcam and some extra tips and tricks that help me out along the way. Thanks so much for watching. As always, if you want to get in touch, drop a comment below or follow me on Twitter at I underscore makes underscore stuff. I'll try to answer all your questions or at least get you pointed in the right direction. That's it for now, folks. My name is Ryan and I make stuff.